The turn of the millennium saw the gaming landscape altered in ways it hadn't been in almost two decades. Sony rode on the momentum of the PlayStation and became the industry leader with the PlayStation 2. Microsoft entered the console wars with their Xbox and used their deep coffers to promote their system as the defining device for gamers to own. Nintendo, however, was struggling. Their fourth home console, the Nintendo GameCube, couldn't keep up with the PlayStation 2, and Microsoft's entry into the console race sucked up more space than ever before. The two corporate giants of Sony and Microsoft already dealt their first blow in 2001, when Sega announced that they would be exiting the console market entirely. Nintendo still had a major advantage in the gaming market with their line of handheld Game Boy systems. While Nintendo held the portable market in its palm, new developments from its competitors and other tech giants could lead to history repeating itself. For the creative minds at Nintendo, a new type of gaming system would have to be made. One that could redefine the entire gaming market and keep Nintendo in the black at one of their lowest points as a video game maker. Everything has a story. This is the story of the Nintendo DS. Throughout this series, we'll be taking a look at the creation, life, and ultimate end of the Nintendo DS. In this part, we'll focus exclusively on the development and release of Nintendo's dual screen handheld during the mid 2000s. In late 2003, Nintendo made a monumental announcement. For the first time in the company's 100 year history, they posted a quarterly loss. Tensions were high as the Nintendo GameCube failed to deliver sales on hardware or software. The Game Boy Advance, while doing well, wasn't enough to keep the company afloat in the rapidly changing industry. Satoru Iwata, still new to his role as president of Nintendo, reassured shareholders and the gaming public at large about the company's future. While 2003 might have shown Nintendo's first quarterly loss, 2004 would introduce something completely brand new. A new game system, codenamed Nitro, would be unveiled and released during 2004. While it wasn't new for companies to make better iterations on their systems, the most head-scratching detail of the announcement was that this wasn't a successor to either the Nintendo GameCube or the Game Boy Advance. Instead, this new system would coexist with both systems and set up a third pillar for Nintendo's business. Just a few months later, Nintendo would give a new name to Nitro. The Nintendo DS was announced in early 2004 and confirmed for release by holiday 2004. The DS began development in 2002, just a year after Nintendo released the Game Boy Advance. The core idea behind the system was brought forward by former Nintendo president Hiroshi Yamauchi. Yamauchi suggested to developers to work on a new handheld system that would utilize two separate screens during gameplay. The idea wasn't foreign to Nintendo. During the 1980s, the company released many Game & Watch systems, some of which also featured two separate screens for gameplay. But the idea of creating an entire system designed around this idea was uncharted territory for console manufacturers. The system's announcement was fairly low-key. Awada stated that the system was meant to revolutionize the way players played and made note of the system's unique two-screen setup. Nintendo gave a few details about the system specifications, but did not show off any physical products. No new games were announced for the system either. For the Nintendo DS, its debut would have to wait until E3 2004. Nintendo's E3 2004 press conference started with a bang, thanks in part to one of the new faces at Nintendo of America, Reggie fils -Aimé. The first part of the press event was spent detailing upcoming releases for the Nintendo GameCube and Game Boy Advance. Around halfway through, Nintendo began building up excitement for something new. Videos of developers talking about the Nintendo DS how unique it was, how powerful the system was, how excited they were to develop games for this new console. Reggie returned to the stage to reveal the Nintendo DS. He slid his hand into the pocket of his blazer and pulled out a silver device. He then opened the device to reveal two screens. The Nintendo DS was making its worldwide appearance. The system sported a clamshell design, similar to the Game Boy Advance SP that launched just a year earlier. The two screens of the system were the same size, with the bottom screen being a touchscreen. The Nintendo DS featured the classic Nintendo D-pad, two shoulder buttons, a start and select button, and four face buttons. The system housed its own stylus, for use with the touchscreen, that was conveniently stored within the shell of the handheld. Nintendo gave further details on the DS's capabilities, including built-in Wi-Fi, a rarity at the time, and a small microphone. The Nintendo DS was built with two game ports, one on the top would house Nintendo DS games, while the port on the bottom played Game Boy Advance games. 
Reggie stated that while many people rightfully assumed that the DS stood for dual screen, all of these additional features led Nintendo to give it a different title, Developer's System. Nintendo showed off a few pieces of software for the Nintendo DS during their press conference. First off was a port of Super Mario 64 for the Nintendo DS, a chance for Nintendo to show the system running 3D graphics. Next up was a brand new Metroid Prime game, utilizing many of the system's unique features. Finally, a new piece of software known as PictoChat was announced. PictoChat is a chat room that would allow up to 16 players to wirelessly communicate with one another. The crowd at E3 was impressed by the Nintendo DS, and Nintendo followed that with a string of promises. The Nintendo DS would be released in late 2004 and early 2005 throughout the world, with a new name and an affordable price. But Nintendo weren't the only ones showing off a brand new handheld system at E3 that year. Sony's entrance into the world of console gaming changed the landscape. The PlayStation 1 was incredibly successful, beating out both Nintendo and Sega during the late 90s. The PlayStation 2 was an even bigger success, and by 2003, it seemed like no one could top the PlayStation brand. In response to this, Sony announced that they had started development on a new handheld game system at E3 2003. The system itself wasn't shown, but early specifications for the system showed that the new system would be far more powerful than Nintendo's Game Boy Advance. Sony came out swinging at E3 2004 when they officially revealed the PlayStation Portable, or PSP. The new system featured a larger screen, standard PlayStation buttons, and a small analog nub. The new device utilized Universal Media Disc, or UMDs, as opposed to cartridges like its competition. PSP wasn't just a gaming handheld, but a multimedia unit. Users were able to access the internet, play music and movies, and even download titles directly to the system's memory. On the show floor at E3, attendees were greeted by demos of upcoming PSP games. Critics were impressed with the PlayStation Portable, with some noting that the graphical power appeared to be closer to the PlayStation 2 than the PlayStation 1. For the first time since the launch of the Game Boy, it seemed like Nintendo finally had a competitor in the handheld market that they had long dominated. New news on the Nintendo DS arrived in September of 2004. Nintendo officially unveiled the launch price and date that the system would be on store shelves. For the first time in Nintendo's history, the Nintendo DS would launch first in North America, November 21, 2004, for $149.99. Nintendo's reasoning for this was to get the DS out right before holiday shopping began in the US. Nintendo went on further by announcing that PictoChat would be built into every Nintendo DS system. Nintendo advertised the DS's launch like many of their previous systems. Hollywood launch parties, full page magazine ads, commercials, and more featured the Nintendo DS and its tagline, touching is good. Marketing and early promotions impressed gamers. So much so, that pre-orders for the new system reached over 2 million units, double what Nintendo anticipated. This led to the Nintendo DS being in short supply when it first launched in North America and Japan. True to their word, the Nintendo DS was released on November 21, 2004, with 6 games available in North America. Launch titles included Super Mario 64 DS, Feel the Magic XXXY, The Herbs, Sims in the City, Madden NFL 2005, Spider-Man 2, and Asphalt Urban GT. The DS also came with a pack-in demo of Metroid Prime Hunters, called Metroid Prime Hunters First Hunt. The demo was also included with PAL region releases. Despite the shortages, the Nintendo DS was a huge success in North America, as it sold over 1 million units by the end of 2004. Japan received the Nintendo DS only a few weeks later, on December 2nd, 2004. The system retailed for 1,500 yen in the region. The Japanese launch included some exclusive launch titles that would never be released outside of the region. The later launch also gave Japan some new titles, like Pokemon Dash and WarioWare Touched. Much like in North America, the Nintendo DS was a success in Japan, selling over 1 million units within a month of its release. Strong sales continued when the DS launched in Australia and New Zealand on February 24, 2005. Europe was the final region to receive the system on March 11, 2005. By the end of March, Nintendo stated that the Nintendo DS had already sold more than 5 million units worldwide, despite the hardware shortages. Strong sales of the DS led Nintendo's stock price to rise, but Sony's PSP wasn't far behind. 
In Japan, the PSP launched on December 12, 2004, only 10 days after the Nintendo DS. Sony released two variations of the PSP at this time. A standard bundle cost 19,800 yen, while a value bundle with additional accessories came out to 24,800 yen. Launch titles included Metal Gear Acid and Dynasty Warriors, alongside an additional 19 games within the first month of the system's launch. Japanese gamers cleared the shelves of PSPs, with Sony stating they sold 200,000 systems on December 12th alone. North America saw the PSP launch on March 24, 2005 with 25 launch titles. The impressive lineup of games might have caused gamers to hop on the Sony train, but Nintendo had one major advantage in the US. The PSP released for $249.99 in the region, $100 more than its competition. The steep price point didn't stop the PSP from selling over half a million units within its first two days on the market, but Sony noted that North American sales were below expectations. The battle between Sony and Nintendo entered a new front, with both of their handheld systems having strong launches. But the real battle was just beginning. Both Sony and Nintendo planned to control the handheld market, and the war was just getting started. The launch windows for the Nintendo DS helped the Game Boy Advance remain more relevant during late 2004 and 2005. New software continued to be released for the system, including titles from heavy-hitting series like The Legend of Zelda and Pokemon. Developers at Nintendo continued to experiment with the system, despite more powerful hardware being available. One of these titles, WarioWare Twisted, first launched in Japan in October 2004, almost two months before the Nintendo DS launched. The title wouldn't come to Western markets until the following spring, far after North American and PAL regions received the new system. After a strong show at E3 2004, Nintendo hoped to achieve similar success at E3 2005. Most of their press conference was devoted to the Nintendo Revolution. The Game Boy Advance wasn't forgotten, however. Much like he did the year before, Reggie fils appeared on stage to announce a new iteration of the Game Boy Advance. He pulled a small console out of his blazer and revealed the Game Boy Advance Micro. The system was the smallest Game Boy to date, measuring 4 inches wide and 2 inches long. The Micro wasn't meant to be a replacement for the Game Boy Advance SP or the Nintendo DS. Nintendo stated that the handheld would be an alternative to these other systems. A few months later, Nintendo revealed the launch date and price of the Game Boy Advance Micro. The new system came out in North America on September 17, 2005 for $99.99. The small system was similar to the Game Boy Advance SP, having a backlit screen and a rechargeable battery. However, the Micro was unable to play original Game Boy or Game Boy Color games, similar to the DS's limitations. The system ended up selling poorly overall, with Nintendo noting that sales were below their expectations. The Game Boy Advance Micro might have been a bigger success if the Nintendo DS wasn't selling so well. In the end, it was the last major release for the Game Boy line, as new software releases would begin to slow down after 2005. One of the biggest games Nintendo showed off at E3 2005 was a pet simulator for the Nintendo DS. Nintendogs was a new IP under the watchful eye of legendary game designer Shigeru Miyamoto. Early concepts for the pet simulator go back to the late 90s, when Miyamoto and other developers at Nintendo were creating software for the failed Nintendo 64 DD. The title was known as Cabbage, and was a pet raising simulator. While the concepts for the project were ambitious, the game never got off the ground during development, perhaps in part due to the commercial failure of the 64DD in Japan. Miyamoto continues to toy with the idea of a pet simulator after Cabbage was cancelled. Inspired in part after his family received a puppy, Miyamoto began producing a new pet simulator title for the Nintendo GameCube as a technical demo. As ideas for the game came together, Hideki Kono took over development of the title at Nintendo as its producer. The title shifted development away from the GameCube and onto the DS, which was still in development at the time. In interviews before the game's release, Kono stated that the shift in development came about due to the additional features the Nintendo DS had, including its touchscreen and microphone. Nintendogs was developed with non-gamers and casual consumers in mind. With this in mind, Nintendo president Satoru Iwata suggested that Nintendogs receive up to 15 different versions, one for each breed of dog. The idea was for players to pick out a version of the game, like a family picking a dog breed at the kennel. Debugging processes would cause Nintendo's developers to drastically reduce the amount of titles available. Three versions of Nintendogs were developed instead, 
with each version housing different puppy breeds for the player to adopt. Gameplay across all versions of Nintendogs remained the same, similar in concept to Nintendo's Pokemon series. On April 21st, 2005, Nintendo's Dashund, Chihuahua, and Shiba were released in Japan, to strong critical reception and massive commercial success. Titles sold over 150,000 copies combined during their first week on the Japanese market and helped boost Nintendo DS sales in the region. A North American launch followed on August 22, 2005. The launch of Nintendogs was accompanied by a price cut for the Nintendo DS system, bringing it down to $129.99. Three versions of the game were released in North America, although Shiba and Friends was replaced by Lab and Friends due to the breed's popularity in North America. North American outlets praised the game, and it sold over 250,000 copies during its launch week. PAL regions received the title a few months later, during the fall of 2005. Nintendog's mania continued into the holiday season, with the release of a special edition Nintendo DS bundle titled Best Friends. This North American exclusive version of Nintendogs featured many of the same dogs as the previous release versions. One final release of Nintendogs came in 2006, Dalmatian and Friends for the North American and PAL markets. Combined, Nintendogs is one of the most successful Nintendo DS games of all time selling nearly 24 million units across all versions of the game. To date, it is the second best-selling title for the Nintendo DS. Nintendogs wasn't the only big release Nintendo had for 2005. In November 2005, Mario Kart DS released a strong reviews and stellar sales. The title became the first on the Nintendo DS to utilize Nintendo's Wi-Fi services, giving players their first opportunity to play against each other online for the Nintendo DS and in the Mario Kart series. 2005 saw some other big releases as well. The Mario & Luigi series saw its first release on the DS with Partners in Time. Animal Crossing made the jump to handhelds with Animal Crossing Wild World, Advanced Wars Dual Strike, Metroid Prime Pinball, Kirby and the Canvas Curse, and Super Princess Peach rounded out a fantastic lineup from Nintendo that put its competitors to shame. Nintendo even released the first entry in their incredibly successful Brain Age series during 2005. Third parties jumped on board with quality titles too. Konami released Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow, Capcom released Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, Square Enix launched Final Fantasy III, a remake of the Famicom classic, and Sega released Sonic Rush. All of these series would see multiple successful installments across the Nintendo DS over the years. The only massive disappointment to come to the DS during 2005 was Pokemon Dash. The lackluster racing game was just the first of many Pokemon spinoffs that would call the Nintendo DS home. All in all, the software library for the Nintendo DS grew exponentially during 2005 and helped push the Nintendo DS sales further and further. Nintendo started 2006 off with a major announcement. A new version of the Nintendo DS was on its way. In January, Satoru Iwata revealed that the Nintendo DS Lite would be released in Japan in March of that year, with a release in other regions to follow shortly after. The redesign of the Nintendo DS was slightly smaller and utilized better lighting to give brighter screens. Nintendo moved the stylus from the back of the system to the right-hand side for ease of access. The revised model would cost the same as the current Nintendo DS, putting it at $129.99 in the United States. The Nintendo DS Lite launched throughout the world in 2006. However, due to the system's increasing popularity, stock shortages occurred for the Nintendo DS Lite throughout 2006 and early 2007. In early 2006, many of the biggest games first shown off for the Nintendo DS were already in players' hands. One notable exception was Metroid Prime Hunters, one of the first games ever shown for the system. Hunters was developed by Nintendo Software Technologies, an internal development studio for Nintendo based in Redmond, Washington. At the time, the studio was best known for creating titles like Wave Race for the Nintendo 64 and GameCube, as they largely focused on designing games with the Western market in mind. NST took on the task of developing Metroid Prime Hunters. After Retro Studios, the developer behind the Metroid Prime reboot, were unable to commit to the project. Metroid Prime Hunters was originally given a 2005 release date, but the title would miss its deadline after early criticisms. Despite the title being made with multiplayer in mind, Metroid Prime Hunters did not feature any sort of online play options. The delay gave designers time to improve other aspects of the game, notably in increasing the frame rate and cleaning up designs. Metro Prime Hunters launched on the Nintendo DS in March of 2006 in North America, with other regions receiving the game in late spring and early summer of that same year. Hunters was praised for its unique first-person shooter gameplay. The title used the Nintendo DS touchscreen for shooting combat and puzzle solving, 
in a way to mirror its console counterparts without using analog sticks. The game received favorable reviews and managed to even win a few end of the year awards. Sales were less than stellar, with the title seeing most of its success in North America. Unfortunately, Metroid Prime Hunters would be the last Metroid game to release on a handheld Nintendo console until Metroid Prime Federation Force was released on the Nintendo 3DS over a decade later. One final game shown off for the Nintendo DS during its reveal at E3 2004 was finally released in May of 2006. New Super Mario Bros. was a hotly anticipated title at the time. Not only was it Mario's first original outing on the Nintendo DS, but it was the first original 2D platformer to star the plumber since 1992's Super Mario Land 2. New Super Mario Bros. combined the classic 2D gameplay of the Mario series with sleek 3D graphics, leading to a 2.5D style of play. The game was released in North America and Japan first, before PAL regions received the game a month later. The game was a huge hit with critics, receiving positive reviews and multiple awards before the end of 2006. New Super Mario Bros. was an even bigger hit with gamers. The game went on to become the best-selling title for the Nintendo DS, with over 30 million copies sold worldwide, and spawning the very popular New Super Mario Bros. spin-off series. By the end of 2006, everyone wanted a Nintendo DS. This included a young preteen who spent the last few years racking up countless hours on their Game Boy Advance. On December 25th, 2006, I woke up to a brand new Nintendo DS Lite under the Christmas tree. Alongside it were copies of Pokemon Ranger and Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, accompanied by a starter set that included some game cases, headphones, and a carrying case. The popular handheld had just joined another gamer, and its influence would shape me for years to come. The DS was on top of the world throughout 2005 and 2006. With best-selling titles and a remodel of the system out on store shelves, many wondered how much longer Nintendo would support the Game Boy Advance. The failure of the Game Boy Micro was the beginning of the end for Nintendo's long dominant handheld line. A few big series would headline the system's lineup in 2005, with The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap and Pokemon Emerald version being critical and commercial successes. 2006, on the other hand, would see few notable titles. Outside of licensed games and ports, many developers were setting their sights on the Nintendo DS and Sony's PSP. 2007 saw an even smaller amount of Game Boy Advance titles released. Samurai Deeper Kaio released on February 12, 2008 in North America. This marked the final title released for the Game Boy Advance in North America, although Nintendo would not officially discontinue the system until 2010. With the Game Boy withering in late 2005, Nintendo began to focus much of their marketing towards their upcoming home console, the Nintendo Revolution. The Revolution, like the Nintendo DS, did not feature cutting-edge graphical power. It relied on motion controls, similar to the Nintendo DS's touchscreen and two-screen capabilities. The Revolution, later titled the Wii, would become a bastion for the casual gaming market, but Nintendo tapped into this market months before the Wii would release. In mid-2006, Nintendo introduced a new branding for many of their more casual gamer-focused titles. Touch Generations was launched, thanks in part to the success of titles like Brain Age, to bring more consumers on board with the Nintendo DS. Games under the Touch Generations banner focused less on action or heavy plot, with many of them fitting neatly into the genre of puzzle games. Touch Generations launched alongside Big Brain Academy and Magnetica on June 5, 2006. Touch Generations became a big success, with Nintendo using the marketing moniker for some Wii titles like Endless Ocean. Reprints of older titles like Brain Age were updated with the branding as well. While the titles attached to the Touch Generation branding were huge successes, Nintendo decided against using them beyond the Nintendo DS and Wii era of games, with the branding ending in 2011 before the launch of the Nintendo 3DS. There were still plenty of great games coming to the Nintendo DS in late 2006 and early 2007. Castlevania received a new entry with Portrait of Ruin in December of 2006, Kirby made his platforming debut with Kirby Squeak Squad, and the main Pokemon series came to the handheld with Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. Another Nintendo DS series launched in February 2007 with Professor Layton in the Curious Village. But one major Nintendo series had yet to come to the handheld. In 2007, was going to change that. At the Game Developers Conference in 2006, Nintendo revealed the next entry in their famous Legend of Zelda series for the Nintendo DS, The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. 
Featuring cell shaded graphics and an overhead view, Phantom Hourglass's developers had one goal in mind, using the DS's capabilities to their fullest extent. The game would use everything, from drawing a path for your boomerang on the touchscreen, to charting the course of your ship with the stylist, to using the microphone and top screen for various puzzles. Fans wouldn't have to wait long. The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass was slated for release later that year. Like with many Zelda games, great ambition takes time. Nintendo later delayed the title out of 2006 and into 2007 for all territories. Japan received the game first, when it released in May of 2007, with other territories seeing a release in October of that year. Nintendo heavily promoted the game upon launch, even releasing a special edition Nintendo DS Lite alongside the game. Critical reception was positive for the title. Taking place after the events of The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, Link is tasked with rescuing Tetra who went missing after entering a ghost ship on the high seas. The entire game is controlled through the touchscreen, with the player moving their stylist across the screen to dictate the direction Link will move in. Combat is handled by tapping on enemies for Link to strike with his sword. Phantom Hourglass walked away with multiple awards by the end of 2007, including Nintendo DS Game of the Year from multiple outlets. Gamers were excited for the title as well, as it went on to sell more than 4 million copies worldwide. It was the best-selling Legend of Zelda game for a handheld until the release of The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D in 2011. New iterations of multiple series hit the DS in 2007 and early 2008, including Castlevania, Kirby, Advanced Wars, Pokemon, Fire Emblem, and more. New ideas and series were still coming to the system. Square Enix released The World Ends With You on the Nintendo DS in July of 2007, Unique RPG won over many fans with its alternative art style and dual screen gameplay. Square Enix supported the DS further with updated ports and remakes of some of their most beloved classic games, including Chrono Trigger in 2008 and a full 3D remake of Final Fantasy IV in 2007. One of the most unique games to come out during this time period was Guitar Hero on Tour. The Guitar Hero series was riding high in the late 2000s thanks to their unique guitar shaped controllers. For the Nintendo DS, the developers at Vicarious Visions created a new peripheral for the Nintendo DS that hooked up via the Game Boy Advance port at the bottom of the system. It featured the Guitar Hero series iconic button layout and had players strum on a digital guitar on the bottom screen while playing. With a solid library of titles and continually high sales, the DS was on top of the world. For years, Nintendo dominated the mobile gaming market. After knocking out its biggest competitors in the late 80s and early 90s, no one seemed to be able to stop Nintendo. Even Sony, who had entered the console market in 1994 and beat back Nintendo's GameCube and Nintendo 64, couldn't compete with the Nintendo DS. But things were about to change. In June 2007, Apple revealed a new device to the world that would change more than just handheld gaming. The iPhone, a smartphone developed by Apple, would be the catalyst of change for technology and entertainment. The new cell phone offered a touchscreen, similar to that with the Nintendo DS, but required no stylus. The phone was small and sleek. It came with cellular services, including calling and texting, but the Trojan horse of the iPhone was the App Store. Released along the first iPhone, the iOS App Store quickly changed the way many casual consumers played their games. No longer were you required to bring an entirely separate system to entertain yourself on a commute to work or a quick restroom break. While the App Store housed many different programs, games quickly caught fire on the service. Early hits like Angry Birds, Cut the Rope, and Fruit Ninja took the world by storm. Titles were simple, quick, and most importantly, cheap. Usually only costing a few dollars, games on the App Store were downloaded hundreds upon thousands of times. Compared to the typical $30 to $40 release of a Nintendo DS game, the App Store was an all-you-can-eat buffet. Big name developers quickly jumped on board, with EA, Ubisoft, Konami, and more developing titles from their popular game series for the platform. The mobile gaming way didn't start there, as new smartphones quickly entered the market alongside new products like Apple's iPad and iPod Touch. These all-in-one devices cut into the handheld gaming market and left a big impact on the development of Nintendo's next iteration of the Nintendo DS. In October of 2008, Nintendo unveiled their next version of the Nintendo DS, known as the Nintendo DSi. The DSi began development in late 2006, after the DS Lite was released. 
Nintendo wanted to fix many of the complaints that people had about the original Nintendo DS, while also including features that would become popular on other electronic devices in the coming years. One early idea for the system was to include two separate card slots for Nintendo DS games, so players wouldn't have to change their cartridges as often. Another idea was to release two different models of the handheld, the other being a larger variation of the DSi. While these features wouldn't be available on the standard DSi, the new system did come with many new features. The DSi included an SD card slot for storage. This SD card could hold pictures taken by the DSi's two cameras, one on top of the system and the other being hidden within the clamshell hinges. Downloadable games were another huge addition. By accessing the DSiWare shop, players had access to original games and downloadable content for existing software. The DSi included various software applications as well, including an internet browser and DSi Sound, a sound creation tool. The DSi did come with one major omission from previous Nintendo DS systems. Game Boy Advance games would no longer be playable on the system, as Nintendo omitted a separate slot for these titles. The DSi launched in Japan in late 2008, before being released throughout the rest of the world in April of 2009. In North America, the system retailed for $169.99, and came out the same day as the Nintendo published game Rhythm Heaven. The improvements that the DSi brought to the table were praised by fans, but many missed the Game Boy Advance cart slot, as it affected many already released Nintendo DS titles like Guitar Hero and Pokemon. Nintendo continued to pump out new games for the system throughout 2008 and 2009, with follow-ups in the Legend of Zelda series and Mario and Luigi. In March of 2009, Rockstar Games released Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars, one of the highest rated titles ever released for the Nintendo DS. Despite heavy competition from the PSP and mobile phones, excellent titles were still hitting Nintendo's dual screen handheld. In late 2006, Square Enix made a monumental announcement for RPG and Nintendo DS fans everywhere. The next installment in the long-running Dragon Quest series would be coming exclusively to the Nintendo DS in 2007. Historically, the Dragon Quest series was released on Nintendo platforms before jumping ship to the PlayStation in the early 2000s. The flagship RPG series was incredibly popular in Japan, but always struggled to gain traction in the United States. Dragon Quest VIII, the previous entry in the series, was the first to use the Dragon Quest title in North America, with previous games using Dragon Warrior. While many Western gamers may not have been too excited for a new Dragon Quest, Japanese players celebrated the release of each new one with a lot of fanfare. Development for the title was rough, despite being less powerful hardware than the previous entry. In mid-2007, Square Enix announced that the title would be delayed into 2008. Dragon Quest IX was shown in full at the Tokyo Game Show in 2008, although once again, the title would be delayed. The new release date was March 2009, but it wouldn't release until July 11th. The launch of the ninth installment of the Dragon Quest series would see a spike in Nintendo DS sales in Japan, with over 2 million people pre-ordering the game. By March of 2010, Dragon Quest IX sold more than 4 million copies before being released in any other regions. North America received the game in July of 2010, a year after Japan. Dragon Quest IX was released in PAL territories a few weeks later. Critical reception was high for the title, and it managed to sell well outside its native country, with around 1 million units shipped. Dragon Quest IX is the best-selling third-party release for the Nintendo DS, and the 14th best-selling game on the system overall. By the end of the 2000s, the Nintendo DS was the most prominent gaming console on the market, but it was beginning to show its age. Nintendo's competitors wouldn't hold back for long, and luckily, a successor was already in the works. It would only take Nintendo a year after the release of the DSi to launch their next iteration of the system. The Nintendo DSi XL was revealed in October of 2009, with a Japanese launch following in November. The DSi XL was originally planned to release alongside the regular DSi, but time constraints caused the system to be delayed internally. The DSi featured the same hardware as the regular DSi, but boasted larger screens for both the top and bottom of the handheld. The DSi XL marked a turning point for Nintendo handhelds. Since the Game Boy was first introduced, Nintendo's handheld consoles would receive revisions that made the system smaller and more compact. This even carried over to their home consoles back in the 1990s. Nintendo of America waited until the spring of 2010 before releasing the DSi XL, 
The system retailed for $189.99, the highest price point a Nintendo DS console would ever be sold for outside of special bundles. While the larger screens were appreciated, many critics and fans seemed to agree that the system seemed unnecessary, especially since the DS would soon be six years old. For players who already had a DSi, they were given the unfortunate news that any of their downloaded games from DSiWare would have to be rebought on the DSi XL. Unenthusiastic support for the DSi XL and low sales led Nintendo to give a price cut to the DSi line of systems. Both the DSi and the DSi XL would receive a $20 price cut before the holidays in 2010, bringing the systems to $149.99 and $169.99 respectively. While the DSi XL saw a stunted launch, part of that could have been attributed to a major announcement Nintendo made just weeks before its launch. Announced via a press release on March 23, 2010, Nintendo told the world of the true successor to the Nintendo DS. The Nintendo 3DS was the company's next handheld, and they would have more to say about it at E3 2010. While few details were available in the press release, two major factors stood out. One, the Nintendo 3DS would be completely backwards compatible with Nintendo DS software. Two, the system would offer glasses-free 3D. 2010 saw fewer major Nintendo titles released for the DS as developers began to shift support to the upcoming 3DS. However, this didn't stop big DS titans from coming to the system. Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver saw their North American release in early 2010, bringing an end to the franchise's fourth generation. Nintendo published sequels in the Golden Sun and Fossil Fighters franchises graced the system, as well as Fire Emblem New Mystery of the Emblem. New Mystery of the Emblem is a remake of the third installment of the Fire Emblem franchise that originally released on the Super Famicom. Unlike previous Fire Emblem titles, this one was only released in Japan. Third party releases included Shantae Risky's Revenge, a DSiWare sequel to the Game Boy Color original, Dimension 2, and Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. E3 2010 would see the Nintendo DS being put on the back burner as its successor, the 3DS, was brought up for full display. Nintendo made sure to showcase the glasses-free 3D to as many people as possible during the conference, while also highlighting the expanded power the 3DS offered. Much like the DSi and DSi XL, the 3DS did not offer a Game Boy Advance slot, limiting certain games and accessories from the Nintendo DS library. Many features of the DS line of games would be available on the 3DS. The system still featured two screens, with the bottom screen being a touchscreen. The microphone was still in place, as well as the cameras from the DSi systems. The button layout remained the same, although the 3DS would include a circle pad for game movement. It wouldn't take long for the 3DS to hit store shelves. The 3DS released throughout quarter one of 2011. The North American launch of the 3DS came on March 27, 2011, at a retail price of $249.99. Sales for the 3DS fell below expectations, causing Nintendo to post another quarterly loss in June of 2011. In response, the 3DS received a massive price cut of $70, bringing the retail price of the new system to $169.99 within just six months after its launch. With the 3DS being Nintendo's primary focus, new games for the DS were few and far between in 2011. Most of the notable games launched in early 2011, with many of them being localizations of titles already released in Japan. Radiant Historia, Okamaden, Pokemon Black and White, and many more managed to come out for the system despite more powerful hardware being available. Although they wouldn't see the same success as earlier released Nintendo DS titles. Nintendo had one final game for the Nintendo DS with Pokemon Black and White 2. A sequel to the previous entries in the series, Black and White 2 launched only a year and a half later. Japan received the games in June of 2012, with other territories getting it in the fall of 2012. It was the final first party release on the Nintendo DS. New releases for the Nintendo DS slowed to a crawl by 2012. Only 27 titles released for the system that year. 2013 would be even worse, as the system saw 11 new games mostly licensed titles and ports of already existing 3DS titles. Despite previous Nintendo systems receiving support from the company long after the release of their successors, Nintendo ended their official support of the system in 2013, only two years after the launch of the 3DS. 2014 was the final year of new Nintendo DS games releasing, with four new titles. Big Hero 6 Battle in the Bay 
released on the Nintendo DS and 3DS on November 28th, 2014, bringing an end to the DS's life almost 10 years after it released in North America. While Nintendo ended support for the DS in 2013, the company quickly took the system's popularity to a new level in 2014. Announced in late January of that year, Nintendo DS games would be coming to the Wii U as part of the system's virtual console. Nintendo DS titles wouldn't come out for a few more months on the Wii U, with the first title, Brain Age, releasing in Japan in June of 2014. In total, 31 Nintendo DS games came to the Wii U, all of which were Nintendo published titles. The Nintendo DS was more than just a successful game console. Nintendo completely changed their marketing strategies with the release of the DS, which led to the most successful period in the company's history. The DS not only outsold its direct competitor, the PSP, but also held its own in a growing market of cheap downloadable titles for phones and other mobile devices. Over 154 million Nintendo DS's were sold during its reign atop the console market. On the software side, the Nintendo DS moved an astounding 948 million games, with no digital distribution platform in place for much of the system's life. All told, the Nintendo DS is the best-selling handheld game console of all time, and the second best-selling game system ever, only being barely beaten by the PlayStation 2. It isn't hard to see why. The Nintendo DS was an incredibly influential game console during my teenage years. I currently own six Nintendo DS systems, two of which came from my childhood. I've logged thousands of hours across the various games released for the system. One of my fondest memories was traveling with my mother to a GameStop in April of 2007, where I purchased copies of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl before the Sunday morning church service. Four years later, I returned to that same GameStop to purchase Pokemon Black and White with my girlfriend, who I would marry just a few years later. The Nintendo DS was the ultimate companion for a young, dumb kid. Long car trips were simply a chance to dive into whatever games the system had on offer. I played my DS so much that the hinges on my first one broke, requiring a replacement. Desperate to play more Pokemon, I used scotch tape in an attempt to play my system. It didn't work. I wasn't the only one in the house with the DS, as my sister and brother both received the system after I did. We had a lot of fun playing Mario Kart DS and Mario Party DS together over the years. The DS was the only system that we were all able to truly bond together with as my siblings generally preferred more casual gaming experiences while I still lived at home. Even in high school when gaming wasn't exactly cool, I continued playing my DS. Countless RPGs graced my cartridge slot in the late 2000s and early 2010s. It's the system that I first played Chrono Trigger on, my favorite game of all time. I packed my DS on any trip I had to make. I even snuck it into my pocket for my first high school dance. I never played it there but it was just nice to have the system with me. Eventually, it came time to retire my DS. On Christmas morning, 2011, I opened the box to a brand new Nintendo 3DS, much like I did five years earlier with my DS Lite. While the system itself was retired, I continued to play Nintendo DS games on my 3DS to this day. I've bought more DS games as an adult, with my collection nearing 100 different titles. To say the least, the Nintendo DS was one of the most impactful game systems I've ever had, and I look forward to making new memories with the countless classics I still haven't played. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to this channel to catch the next video as soon as it releases. In the comments, let me know what game, game console, or gaming event you would like for me to cover on this channel. And once again, thank you for watching.